your main man back with another wrestling what if. Now, what if wrestling as we know it dissolved? There was no wrestler in the entire world under contract. WWE, TNA, ROH, Japan, Mexico, everywhere, Puerto Rico, they all crumble. They're gone. There's a giant pool of wrestling talent trying to make any living they can on an independent circuit. All of a sudden, you have a large bankroll put in front of you to build a wrestling company. A wrestling company is expensive. You need high production values that requires a great many expenditures to capitalize on that television. You have enough money to make it, but you don't have billionaire Ted's money. You can't write checks to everybody in the world. you got to be careful with your money. You can't sign a thousand world heavyweight champions. You can't have a wrestling roster that's so deep you forget people are even working for you and they're getting paid. You can't do that. You have to be responsible with the money. You have to be able to turn a profit in two years. Now, seeing that that's the case, you have a program you can put together and you can pick any wrestler in the world. Now, here's the thing. This is not fantasy from the standpoint of you can go back and get dead wrestlers or you could have Hulk Hogan from 1986. No, no, no. Wrestlers, as they look today, are the wrestlers you get to pick. Feel free to do a video response. Feel free to leave comments in the video. If you need to, if you, you might need to leave, you know, eight comments to, to get it with the five characters. That's fine. I, I don't have a problem with people doing that. Do what you need to do. But I want to know what 30 wrestlers would you take? You have two hour, you have two hour television show. Your show runs once a week. You're going to be running one pay per view four times a year. You have four pay-per-views a year, and you're building to them. You're building in three-month arcs of, of your booking, and you have 30 pieces of talent that you can you can have under contract. Now remember, you're also going to be able to circle people in and out. So the yeah, ability to cycle those people in and out is really going to be helping you. But to start off with, from uh, for the first 90 days, you have 30 pieces of talent that you're going to be stuck with. You can't bring anybody in or anybody out in 90 days. You've got to work with these people. Those are who you're going to be making your two-hour show with. That's who you're going to be working towards building on your uh, your big pay-per-view. Again, you are limited in the fact that if you have Hulk Hogan, for example, if you have The Undertaker, for example, you can't have them out there every week. If you... Uh, and a guy like The Rock, let's just be real about it. You can't pick The Rock because he he, he isn't going to, to be able to come. You might be able to get The Rock to come in for a shot here and there, but he's not a guy you can put on this roster because realistically The Rock isn't going to come back and be part of a wrestling company as a regular guy. Now, here is the 30 people that I'm picking for my company. Uh, 30 male talents. I'm not going to cover female talents now. And uh, I'm going to make a quick mention right off the top. I'm also going to take four managers. I'm a big, uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm going to take five managers. I'm a big proponent in managers. Managers are one of the big things that are missing today, particularly when you're going to be cycling talent in and out, the manager immediately gets transferred to heat, or, or in some cases, transfers, you know, being over onto that talent if you're a good guy manager. Um, but you can do stuff with them, you know. You can get them in a ring and so forth. For my managers, uh, I would have Ric Flair, Eric Bischoff, Paul Heyman, uh, JTG, quite honestly, I see him as a manager. I don't see him as a wrestler. I think he, he could be he could be interesting to see. And uh, uh, Father Jane Mitchells. And I'd build factions up around them. But I'm not going to go through the entire way I booked this. I'm just going to kind of go through who the roster would be. I would take uh, old goat face Brian Daniel. Um, or Brian Danielson or, or Daniel Bryan or whatever the hell you want to call him. I'd, I'd go, back, go back the old way. Uh, actually, but I would take uh, Antonio Cesaro. I think he is, is a big upside. Uh, I'm going to take Alberto Del Rio. I'm going to take Big E Langston, but I am not going to take that name or, the, or his gear. That all has to be repackaged. I'm going to take CM Punk. I'm going to take Damian Sandow, and Sandow is going to get a giant push. He's going to be a top guy. I'm going to take Ezekiel Jackson. I'm going to take the great Kali. Yeah, believe it or not, great Kali is coming aboard, and he, no one's beating Kali. He's, he's going through people 
for, for these 90 days at least. He's just going through people. But I don't put him near the belt. Uh, you're going to have a Mark Henry there. Mark Henry, uh, definitely. Titus O'Neil. You're going to have uh, Zach Ryder. Completely new gimmick, but I think that guy I think that guy can do a lot. I think there's a lot of upside in Zach Ryder. He's got a good build. He's not too small. He does his gimmick very well. And he has a terrible gimmick. So when you can do a terrible gimmick well, you know, take a look at three count. They had a terrible gimmick because they did it the shits. I mean, they did it, the, it was the shits when they did it. You're, I'm going to take Wade Barrett. I'm going to take uh, Festus or, or whatever the hell they're calling him in TNA. The Aces and Eights guy. Uh, I think there's a big upside in him. He's got himself in better shape now than when he was Festus. I have to take Chris Daniels. He's going to be a top guy. This guy, he's, he's everything is clicking for Chris Daniels right now. He's, I mean, he's great. The fact that TNA, TNA has done so little with him is, well, expected, I suppose, and sad. But he's he is clicking on all cylinders. Also from TNA, you have to take up this. I mean, this guy, this guy is a hell of a talent. And AJ Styles, although I don't see him as a champion, at least a world champion, I I, I think there's a place for him. And the fact of being in a fresh environment with different talent to work with, I think, would be a big bonus to AJ Styles. I take Bully Ray. Bully Ray is tremendous, tremendously improved his game. I think he'd be part of my team. He'd be part of my uh, group. Doug Williams, a guy that they do nothing with, and I don't know why. He's certainly a guy that, uh, that can play for my team. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, Bobby Roode and Eric Young, Mr. Anderson, Kurt Angle. I bring back Fit Finley, put the damn tights on him. I don't care. I don't care what he looks like. As long as he's physically not crippled, I put him in the ring. I put him in the ring until his work looks like uh, Hulk Hogan's. Because his psychology is unbelievable. It's wonderful. Uh, the Briscoe Brothers. You have to bring the Briscoe Brothers, the best tag team in wrestling. you got to get both of them, uh, especially Chicken. I love, the, love me some Briscoe, as Jim Cornette would say. Jay Lethal. I take Jay Lethal. Not only, Jay Lethal was my first champion. He's going to win the belt. He's going to go over uh, on uh, uh, all these guys. A big tournament. Probably come down to the end, CM Punk and uh, Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal would hail to the king, one, two, three, in the middle. And then, then, then we're going to bring him back uh, with Damian Sandow. But I'm not going to get into the whole fantasy booking thing here. Uh, now, also, I'm going to pick up uh, Epico and Primo and Carlito, the, the Colognes. Uh, a nice little faction there. They can work well. I like factions. I like a lot of factions. And I think when you, you have factions, you need less heel and face. Because then people are like, oh, I'm with the, the Carlito faction. Or, oh, I want to enjoy the Eric Bischoff faction. Or whatever it is. I think that works really well. Uh, I'm going to bring in Orlando Jones. Or, oh, Orlando Jones. Orlando Jordan. And we're going to do that straight up bisexual gay kind of gimmick that he needs to be doing. And he's going to be uh, a main event player. I think there's so much money in him. I don't know. I don't know. TNA got rid of him. Oh, it's this gay thing's offensive. It's 2013, dude. Uh, uh, a bisexual black heavyweight champion could could be very very interesting. You could do a lot of things with that. And speaking of <laughs> bisexual, we're gonna bring in Gold Dust, paint up and all. I don't care. He he could he could be doing that gimmick when he's like 60. Dustin Rhodes is some of the best psychology, one of the best uh, uh, ring hands of all time. You can use him. You can get him just as over today as Goldust as he was when he first hit with that thing. Because uh, he's a wrestler that completely doesn't rely on the body. So those are the uh, the talent I would take. That's my 30. That's exactly 30. Plus some plus some uh, managers. And I'd like to hear who your 30 would be. You know, So feel free to hit the video response. Feel free to leave as many comments below as you need to. And let me know what you think of my selection. And remember, we're, we're trying to do this with keeping an eye to the money.